I have to say, we live in the most fun timeline. Everything is coming full circle. Everything's being dredged up and repackaged. And I don't just mean the constant, unending flow of genuinely awful remakes of TV shows, movies, and video games that disrespect the source material and mock the fans. You know, the people that the creators rely on. But even moral panics are being recycled now, updated for a modern global audience as well. I'm old enough to remember the religious right whipping itself into a frenzy over Harry Potter like 20 years ago, while the young leftoids of that era were constantly tipping their fedoras and talking about edgelord atheism in their defense of J.K. Rowling. But now the majority of those people have metastasized into socialists who are screeching bloody murder at the success of Hogwarts Legacy. Meanwhile, today's modern right wing is engaging in an actual satanic panic. What a timeline. What I'm talking about here is Sam Smith's devil-themed Grammy performance last week. Now I can hear everybody already asking me, at least if you're as out of touch as I am, who the fuck is Sam Smith? Yeah, I don't keep up with celebrities or actors or musicians anymore. None of that normie shit holds my interest. But apparently he's a big deal, if his Wikipedia page is anything to go by. Honestly, the only thing that I personally know him for is that one of his most recent big hits, Unholy, was used as the background track for like half of all the TikToks that came out in 2022, to the point that I dreaded hearing it pop up every time. <laughs> But okay, Sam Smith at the Grammys. He performs Unholy with a satanic-themed routine, makes sense considering the title, and the rightoids are angry, calling it a promotion of Satanism and the degeneration of Christian values in America. Now personally, I don't care too much about that. I'm not a Christian. This doesn't seem any more edgy than anybody else who acts profane towards a religious topic. Like I said, the edgelord atheists of years ago would talk about having gay sex with Jesus in order to make the old religious grandmas clutch their pearls, because it was funny to get that reaction out of them. I wouldn't deprive anyone of their shock value displays. They definitely have their place. Though, do you think that any of these people, these individuals who are hyper-rich and hyper-progressive, would tolerate that rule cutting the other way? This comic comes to mind, where the edgelord atheist gone to commie seed says, with a smirk on his face, Hail Satan, hey hey hey, I'm so edgy. And the normie replies, ha ha, hail Hitler. The leftoid flies into a rage about how insensitive that is, and how evil Hitler was, and how jokes perpetuate toxic ideas regardless of your intention. Funny how they can pull the death of the author card on something like this, saying that the message of the expression exists separately from the author's intent, and should be treated as such. But they don't do it on J.K. Rowling and her politics as it pertains to the Harry Potter stuff, because there's no actual principle here, just power grabs. So what's actually going on in this situation? I mentioned during a previous video on comedy that progressives view jokes as a window into the soul, that if you joke about something, you must actually believe it, that your joke isn't just a joke, but a dog whistle. Therefore, the normie who jokes about Nazis in the comic, who is edgy simply to get a reaction out of people, is actually a Nazi himself deep down. That is what the world looks like to a prog. Okay, so if we examine their own behavior using that lens, does this mean that they view themselves as Satanists? Well, no, probably not. After all, the Church of Satanism didn't even think that Sam Smith's performance was all that good. What's actually happening here is something that I was trying to get at with my Identification with Evil video. These people aren't Satanist, they're simply anti-Christian, and they're adopting what the Christians view as evil imagery as a way to show to the Christians in their own language, their opposition. That is the point of the identification with evil. Because they oppose the current culture of the West as a heteronormative capitalist patriarchy, anything that the West hates is something that they support as a part of that Gramscian demoralization and subversion. At the risk of plugging myself too much in this video, think back to my recent release on ugly statues. The demoralization, the promotion of anti-aesthetics as a method of subversion, the tearing down of quality as a component of the grand equalization and the Hegelian end of history. Keep that in mind as you watch this clip that went viral from another of Sam Smith's performances. When I first saw this clip, it was posted with the message, celebrating ugly, and yeah, that's about right. Sam Smith is not an attractive guy. I mean, he was back in the day, but more on that a little bit later. This clip contains all of the usual Hollywood degeneracy ramped up to 11, the sexual content, the clothes and the dancing. However, I can't say I've ever seen Hollywood glorify men drinking each other's piss in an orgy before. That's a new one for me. 
Hey, Dylan Burns, are you sure there's not a component of the LGBTQ community that actively promotes piss-guzzling monkeypox degeneracy like I said before? Hey, hey, that's four videos promoted today. Let's see if I can go for five. Yes, it's funny to watch the rightoids clutch their pearls over degeneracy and Satanism again like in the good old days. But it's also funny to watch Sam Smith wrap himself up like a ham and think he's good looking. I'm here to laugh at the retardation of both sides. I'm an equal opportunity laugher. But you know what? Something has to have demented Sam Smith's mind over the years. Back in 2012, he looked like your average boy band type pop star guy. Nothing too unusual. He wasn't overweight, he wasn't grotesque. On the fat-centered podcast literally titled I Weigh, Sam Smith admitted that he was a fat kid who had liposuction at 12. Then he developed an eating disorder that kept him thin in his 20s. But as he's become more comfortable with himself, he's allowed himself to get fat again. One of Sam's fans interpreted the situation as such. Reminder that Sam Smith was fat before they were skinny. This isn't them letting themselves go. This is them accepting themselves and being happy with their body. Something you clearly lack the ability to do. All right, dude, it sounds more likely that he's swinging between two extremes and has yet to handle his issues, but whatever. The fan refers to Sam Smith with the pronouns they, them, though, because Sam came out as genderqueer in 2017. Then he also came out again as non-binary in 2019. I bet if, in a couple years' time, the newest term for something like this is differently gendered, Sam will come out again as that new term. This kind of stuff honestly just feels like a celebrity trying to keep at the edge of the progressive avant-garde. Like when Demi Lovato claimed to be non-binary for a few years for clout, and then quietly walked it back later. Oh yeah, I knew I could make it to five videos. Awesome. The algorithm loves this shit. Here's the thing. If you told me the old Sam was gay, yeah, sure. He looks like he could be, but more importantly, who cares? It doesn't seem to be a part of this person's personality. But if you told me that this guy was gay, holy shit. This is the difference, at least in part, between being a regular gay person and being politically LGBTQ. And it's this sort of thing that is why I'm not pro-LGBTQ, because it's frankly homophobic. Being gay doesn't mean you have to be into cross-dressing, or drag, or guzzling piss, or promiscuous sex. And a large chunk of historic gay activism has been about disproving that vision of what gay people are, showing that gay people can in fact be a part of a normal, healthy social fabric. But that's not what modern LGBTQ activism is. That shit seems to be all about normalizing the most unhealthy behaviors because it's against the norm. And on the left, there's a moral obligation to be as subversive as possible. Here's kind of what I'm getting at. The lyrics of the song during that piss guzzling clip, don't worry, I won't play it again, are Sam Smith proclaiming that he's not here to make friends and he needs a lover. When asked about the meaning of that song on a podcast, Sam told this story. I went on a date and the guy, you can just tell when someone's not there to like get down. I had to sit through this day and I was like, oh my God, you've wasted my life. You've wasted hours of my life. I sat through the day and then went to bed and then woke up the next morning with a little hangover that I didn't want. I got in the studio with Jesse and Literally, I just said that. I didn't come to make friends on this day. Then the song happened. So, Sam wanted to fuck, the other guy was looking for something more serious, and Sam therefore regarded the night as a waste of his time. Now it's fine if you just wanted sex and he didn't, that just means that you weren't compatible. But to regard the encounter or the other person as a waste just shows how little respect Sam actually has. And that very normal encounter was apparently so noteworthy to him that it warranted being turned into his next hit single. I don't think a person not wanting to have sex with you because they reject the promiscuity of your current lifestyle is worthy of being mocked in song, but it is pretty clear that modern music disagrees. It's not just Sam Smith fans on Twitter that are retarded, though. Listen to this Zoomer. Smiley Cyrus has done this, Nicki Minaj has done this, so many people have done this, and what I think the difference here is, is that Sam Smith was assigned male at birth, and we are not used to seeing people who are assigned male at birth dance around in lingerie and corsets and things like that. You can tell this is a young person, right? Not because of the voice or the look or anything, but because of the claim that our culture hasn't seen males gender bend before. The history of popular music, for something like 30 years before this kid was fucking born, is full of gender bending males. This isn't subversive anymore. This is the norm. David Bowie did this shit in the 80s and received the same backlash and more than Sam Smith is now, because he was in a culture way less permissive of it. Hell, David Bowie literally did the same dumbass fashion stuff. They both wore suits that made them look like a fucking angel from Evangelion at one point. Listen to this chick. We need to acknowledge that as a society, we've been conditioned that there is only one version of sexualized and sexy that is appropriate for primetime TV. And it is white, it is thin, and it is gender conforming. And anyone who goes outside of that box will get significantly more flack for sexualization. And oh no, what about the children? 
than the people who fit in that box because the people who fit in that box turn these same people who complain about it on. Where were you when Britney Spears was all, I'm a slave for you, baby? Where were you when Katy Perry literally was shooting milk and confetti out of whipped cream cans coming out of her boo boo boobs? You didn't care because that was hot to you and therefore that was okay. Dude, Britney Spears and Katy Perry received a shit ton of backlash for that stuff back in the day. Hell, the salt counter was through the roof when Britney Spears and Madonna kissed at the 2003 VMAs. I highly doubt Britney Spears would do it again 20 years later though, considering that Madonna showed up to the Grammys looking like the fucking Overmind. Listen Madonna, allowing yourself to age like a normal 64 year old woman, wrinkles and all, would have been better than morphing yourself into a bobblehead. What I'm getting at ultimately is, you can't year zero this shit and pretend that Sam Smith is doing anything new or groundbreaking. This isn't subversive anymore, it's normal. Nobody's persecuting Sam Smith in the same way as gay or gender-bending stars of the 80s were persecuted. Or hell, in the way that drastically tamer stars were persecuted even earlier, like the Beatles or Elvis. Those walls have been broken down already. Those behaviors have already been normalized. That's why Sam Smith has to resort to trying to normalize piss guzzling, because that's what's still on the edge nowadays. That's how far progressivism has led us. Here's the really funny bit though. Remember Jack Chick, the dude who made Christian comics that were kinda ridiculous, starting back in the 60s but blew up as amazing memes during the early internet? Part of what made these comics so funny was the over-the-top portrayal of hippie culture and the sexual revolution as overtly satanic, while the Christian characters in the comics were persecuted by the American government specifically for being Christian. It was blatantly ridiculous. Pop culture of the 60s through 2000s was never actually satanic. And we all took this portrayal as part of that pearl clutching that we all laughed at. And no, the American government was not actually persecuting Christians for being Christians in that era. That's also a falsehood. But nowadays though, in a weird twist of events, the real world is starting to resemble something like what Jack Chick described a half a century ago. With Sam Smith's cringy performance on the one hand, and on the other, the recent FBI whistleblower leak that purports to show that some elements within the FBI view Catholicism and Christianity in general as a terrorist ideology. I don't know if this is a real document, or if it's something that the whistleblower made up for his 15 minutes of fame, but if it's real, I'm legitimately stunned. We're actually living in something approximating the Jack Chick future, where the satanic is normal and the religious is a violent counterculture. I honestly never thought I'd see the day. Now, like I said, I'm not a Christian. To me, this is just a really funny series of events, that the leftoids have pushed things so far that we're actually approaching the rightoid fever dreams of what the left is. Everyone who is reasonable never said, oh, we're gonna go to that dark future and it's good actually. We all said, you're overblowing it, it'll never get that far, we just want gay marriage or whatever. And now that it actually is going that far, those of us who wanted only gay marriage, we should be speaking out against the march of progress at this point. The liberal argument for inclusivity has always been one with stipulations, and even though progressives hate that, it's good and necessary. The idea is to bring marginalized groups into the center, to give them a seat at the table, to allow them to become productive members of society, and to not simply self-destruct on the sidelines with vicious behaviors. But part of that deal, part of that normalization, is that they have to leave that vicious behavior behind on their path forward. This is why the gay person who isn't promiscuous, but instead leads a stable, constructive life is actually virtuous, while somebody like Sam Smith is not. The former is what you'd want a gay person to aspire to be, while the latter is what you'd want a gay person to run away from as fast as possible. The issue ultimately is the normalization of fundamentally unhealthy behaviors that damages both the people who engage in it and the social fabric itself in the name of subversion against the system, when the true subversion at this point is being a conservative in your private affairs, as everyone around you nihilistically self-destructs in an orgy while consuming the remains of what better people have built for them.